Okay, today we are learning about making molas like the Kuna Indians did. And we are going to use different patterns, different colors, and different shapes to create our very own mola. Molas were unique toward each individual person, each individual tribe, and they related them to their lifestyle and the things that they believed in. So we're going to start out by getting our colors together. And we're going to look at what colors we like to put side by side. So I like to kind of flip the colors around, see which ones I like the best. You know, sometimes I want to look at a color and putting two colors together, they don't do a lot. Then when I add something like this, ooh, it pops. So you're going to find the colors that you like that pop when you put them together. And then you're going to start out by putting the first color down. That will be your smallest color. And you're going to cut it out with your with your different strips. So here's the small color, the smallest one. You draw it. I've already cut it out with white paper, but just so you can see the effect of it, I'm going to show you what I did. Okay, so I drew my, my butterfly and I used Sharpie so it was easier for me to follow. Now this one I'm actually drawing close to the lines because I just wanted you to see that I cut it out. Now I'm going to take the color that I want to be on the top and I'm going to cut that out first. I'm going to cut it exactly like I like it but a little bit bigger. So I cut it out and I trace it and I have a, just a little bit of a bigger marking to it. So technically the first one that I cut out, the first color, is going to be straight on to the pattern. So each pattern gets a little bit bigger. Just make your marks nice and wide. There you go. And then you will cut that pattern out and you will use that as your template for the next color. And you'll continue that on as you go. So next I'm going to put the blue on top of my red. There you go. And you notice I always put a little white paper under. That's just so my marker doesn't bleed. That's all that is. So my second color, I'm going to color that, trace it just a little bit bigger. I want the outlines to resemble it so when I put it all together it will look like a graduated line it'll be like three colors popping out if I was to cut these exactly the same shape then they would just sit on top of each other we wouldn't really see the color difference I'm going to cut out that third color That'll be the template for my next one. Now make sure when you're cutting it out that you're not leaving any of the Sharpie. You want to kind of cut to the left side of it because when you put it down on the paper, you don't want it to have that Sharpie edge left on there. And lastly, we're going to trace our third color which is almost 
not even going to look like the shape that we started with. You're going to add them all three together and then see how beautiful that looks. Put them all. One's just a little bit bigger than the other. So they make a really pretty pattern together. Next we're going to get some other shapes with some nice bold colors. You have your black paper, which is what they used in the background of most of their molas. And what they like to do was cover every single space because in their beliefs, in their customs, if there was any space left, that's where the evil spirits came in. And that was why they filled it all the way up. But I just like it because it looks beautiful all filled up. It's real pretty together. So you're going to take some shapes. You're going to make some shapes out of your paper by cutting. And if you cut with a fold, fold it in half, you're going to get symmetrical looking lines. So you can have one on one side and one on the other side. Because that's another thing that the mola the molas do is that they represent the one line on one side and then it's opposite and so if you use this method of cutting paper while it's folded and then cut it in half you will have an exact pattern of what's on the other side that makes it a lot easier I don't know about you but I can't cut the exact same shape every single time unless I have a pattern this makes it foolproof where it's going to end up exactly the same. So you're going to be cutting those up using different colors and different types of cuts. Now, in our first lessons, we talked about lines and shapes. So you're going to be using lines and shapes doing this. Okay, the last thing I'm doing here is I got my handy dandy hole puncher. I'm going to show you how fun a hole puncher can be. It makes perfect circles. And on these kind of pictures, it's fun to have little dots in between just to make the black lines make it stand out for little colored dots. So I'm loading up my hole puncher with all the different colors that I've cut up and then I will have in my little hole punch catcher all those different colors and I will put them out so you can see them. I'm going to dump it out there and there they are. Now I can choose where I put them which makes it a little bit hard after I was touching them there. You have to kind of have moist fingers to get them to stick right. So I'm going to put those to the side. Clear off my paper. And now I'm going to arrange these patterns and things that I've cut out. I have all kinds of different papers. So I'm going to put a base color down, which that red will just kind of be my base color. You can even do that on the bottom squares too. Here I'm making sure that my patterns are symmetrical so that there's exactly the same amount of space on top and the same amount of space on the sides. And I've cut some, some little papers, little lines. A lot of times lines in these molas represent movement. They can be the movement of the air the movement of water, but that's what they represent. And since butterflies fly in the air, we can say that these lines will represent the movement of the air as the butterfly flies around. So you can start placing your lines, and remember that I'm trying to fill in all the spaces. I'm not leaving a lot of black left over. 
So once I have my lines set up there, I'm going to start adding things on the bottom. <clears throat> so I cut out some yellow, the kind of yellow that I have underneath my butterfly, and then use some of the red that I had from the top. I'm adding in the orange, which is different than the other colors that I had, but it's a nice complement. So I'm going to cut it in half and I put one on one side and one on the other. I can choose different areas as I cut my papers and where they I like them. And what I like to do on my MOLA made out of paper is that I don't glue it down right away because I might like to change it up before I glue it. So I play around with the patterns and I see what looks good to my eye. And sometimes what looks good to me doesn't look good to somebody else. So I always like to play around with it first and see if, does this really work? Does this fit there? Does this fit over there? And also how do the colors contrast? Do they complement each other? Do they make the rhythm of the picture smooth? Does everything look equal? So these are questions that I can ask before I glue things down. Once I glue it down, I don't have as many choices. And then it wrecks it if I, if I try to take it off. So now I'm adding a little bit of pink just to make the, the black kind of pop. And I'm going to add some different shapes, maybe some triangles I'll cut out. So you can play around with different shapes too. You can make bigger circles and then littler circles on the inside. You can make longer squiggles. You could cut paper like in a circle and then keep cutting around the circle inside and it makes like a spiral. Those are fun shapes to make also on your molda. So I want you to try out different shapes. I want you to pick an animal, try out different shapes, and see what you like. And you might even put more than one animal on your molda. If you were choosing more than one animal, then you would make the animal smaller and maybe you would give it more of a, a centered space to the left or centered to the right. So however you choose to do it, I want you to just use your imagination. It doesn't have to look like mine, but go back to that video and watch, look at the other images that they have in there, the other animal pictures, and patterns that the Kuna people have chosen to to make their molas out of and you you decide how you want it to look. Now I'm adding a little bit of shapes that look like a moon. Because a lot of their pictures and things that they did, they came from nature. So when you're adding your shapes, like I said, sometimes you have to play around with them. I don't know if I like these triangles right there on top of my little butterfly. So I'm going to move it around a little bit. See where I like it. Look good there. Yeah. Butterflies have kind of repeating shapes on the top and on the bottom of their wings. So that's a possibility. I think I like that. So now I'll try to add some of these triangles to the bottom of my picture. See how I like that. Mm 
move some more stuff around and add some more stuff here. I'm just going to try to fill up all my paper. There it is. I think I like it. And now I'm going to add my polka dots. I'm just going to put them on the paper Good to get my fingers a little moist so I could take them off my hand. So you might have try having a damp sponge by your side so you could touch your finger to it and your finger will be moist. And then you could put the dots wherever you think they look good at. And you could alternate the colors depending upon which color it's next to. That's also fun too. have it. 